Hi and welcome to my video. This week I'm sharing a recipe for alu methi, which is a very popular North Indian dish. It pairs potato and the leaves of the fenugreek plant. I think this is a very comforting dish and for Pranav as well, he associates it with his hometown with being an Ambala because mummy always makes this for us and I have really grown to love this dish. I hope you do too. Now this very beautiful fenugreek was given to us by two of Pranav's friends from work and they have some land where they plant organic produce and they were so kind to give us this methi so I wanted to say thank you so much to Gurpreet and Simran for your generosity. Now the first thing you have to do when prepping your methi is to of course wash it very thoroughly and you want to pick off the tender leaves of the methi. The stems are quite hard and if you incorporate the stems or you try to incorporate the stems into this dish, I'm sorry to say that you will not be pleased with the outcome. So be sure to discard the stem. Now you can pick off the leaves kind of, you know, one by one as I'm doing, or you can attempt to simply slide the leaves right off the stem. That works fairly well too. And this is what the methi looked like when I was finished cleaning it. I have about half a pound of methi and I'm not going to worry about drying it. If it's still a little bit moist, that's not going to be a problem in this dish. The next thing you have to do is roughly chop your methi. It doesn't have to be too fine and it's okay if some pieces are bigger than other pieces, but you definitely want to chop this up a bit. And you can simply set it aside for later. The next main ingredient is the potato. I used yellow potatoes and I peeled them first and decided that I was going to semi-boil the potatoes. So not thoroughly as if I was going to mash them up, but just a little bit to get them started because they are going to cook as you prepare the dish in its entirety. So I decided to go with about an inch and a half size cubes. Of course, they're not perfect cubes, but a little bit on the bigger side, not tiny little pieces of potato, but something substantial. Then I put the pieces into a patila or a stock pot with some boiling water straight from my kettle and I salted the potato. Not a lot, but just a little bit to give it some flavor. Of course, we are going to add salt into the dish during its preparation as well, so don't over salt your potato. This is just how I like to do mine. And then I set that patila over high heat and let it boil for exactly three minutes. Then I strained the potato, poked it a little bit with my knife to see that I had the right texture and set it aside to gather the rest of my ingredients. And it's just a handful of ingredients for this recipe because the stars are really the potato and the methi and the methi has a very beautiful flavor of its own so you don't want to overpower that with too many spices. Now in addition to these and the salt, you are gonna need a little bit of oil and you're gonna heat up that oil on medium high in a non-stick pan or skillet. I didn't wait for the oil to get hot. I simply added the slit green chili pepper and I did that so that I could tell when the oil was hot enough. I knew that when I saw the chili pepper crackle that my oil would be hot and then I could go ahead and add the remaining ingredients. So that's the hing or the asafoetida, the lal mirch or the red chili powder and the dhania powder. And then just push those around a little bit so they don't get stuck in one place. And you don't have to wait too long before adding the potato. Go right ahead, throw that right in there. And then I used a flipping and turning motion to incorporate the potato and the spices. I noticed that my potato was getting a little bit stuck and to me that signifies that my pan is too hot. So I went ahead and turned down the temperature a little bit, tried to get my potatoes on one layer and I just let them cook for about uh, three minutes. And this right here, what I'm showing you, is mustard oil. It's completely optional. It has a very distinctive smell. As you can see, the packaging said pungent. That is true. I think it adds a little something, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Now, my pan was too hot, the potato got stuck, so I used the old trick of deglazing with a little bit of water, and nine times out of 10, that will solve this problem. One danger of doing this though, when you are cooking potato, is that your potato will start to break down a little bit. So once you get the little charred bits out of the way, try to be gentle with your potato so you don't end up mashing it while you're stirring it around. 
So crisis averted in this case, I was able to successfully salvage my potato. I was freaking out the whole time while this was happening. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you and you can move right on to this step, which is to add the methi leaves to the potato and incorporate them very gently using the same turn and flip motion or turn and push motion. I think that this dish is just so beautiful, and I mean physically beautiful. It's an attractive dish. These cubes of potato covered in these delicate, vibrant green leaves. I love the way it looks. And alu methi is a side dish, so it's typically served alongside a curry or dal and then rice and roti, but you can also stuff it into a paratha, and that is absolutely scrumptious. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe and found it useful and instructive. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because I post recipes every Monday and I post other stuff on Thursdays. And it means so much to me every time you hit the subscribe button. I love seeing our community grow and um, I really like doing this. So thank you so much. Thanks for spending time with me and I will see you next week with another recipe. Okay, bye-bye.